Hello, everybody, and welcome to Writers Speak, a program dedicated to the written word and those who produce it. My name is Elaine B. Holt, and I'm your host today. And with me, I have a wonderful writer by the name of Kay Mail Miller. Welcome, Kay. Welcome to Writers Speak. Thank you, Elaine. I'm privileged to be here. Well, it's really thrilling to have you. I mean, some of the things that you've written about are so interesting. But before we get into our conversation, I would like to tell our viewers a little bit about yourself. Kay Mayo Miller actually has a PhD. And in her past, way back when, she worked for the Salisbury Times and is a published freelance writer for the Baltimore Sun in, then in Maryland. My goodness, welcome to California. And I know you came to California in 1992, is that correct? That's right. Okay, and at that time you were writing for a publication called We the People. Right. And you had a column with them. I did, Talking It Over was the name of the column. Talking It Over? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, how wonderful. Listen, you know, I'd just like to give a little introduction because I know viewers really love to hear the personal side of people. So why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself, other than what I've said, anything that you feel comfortable talking about? Well, I, I feel comfortable telling you that I'm 77 years old and I uh, have written two books uh, since I've been to California. Uh, I, uh, um, I'm very interested in women and women's issues and in aging. Naturally, I'm interested in aging. That's what I'm doing right now. Why is it that you're, you're so proud to announce that you're 77 years old? I think that's very interesting. Most women hide their age. You know, you e seem to be exactly. very proud of it. Exactly. I think we as women need to start asserting who we are and stop hiding facts if we ever want to uh, to really make our mark in the world, we need to be genuine. And so I think it's important that we say that we are as old as we are. And you look at me, I don't look 77. I don't talk 77. I don't act 77. But I am 77. And, and, and I'm glad that I can be energetic and alive and interesting at 77. Well, you're definitely an inspiration. I mean, you're my elder since I'm 72. I mean, <laughs> See, it's always good. wonderful. Oh, no, it's always wonderful when you meet a woman that's older than yourself, you know, yes. then you can say, oh, okay, there's something to look forward to. Well, look, at, I know you wrote two books, and I'd like to start out with the first book, which I thought was very, very interesting as I thumb through it. It's called Talking It Over, Understanding Sexual Diversity. And I understand that this book was written for yourself as you met the challenge of looking at the choices that your son has made. So I understand you have two sons, am I correct? Right, I have so two sons. So then one of your sons, I imagine, came out, and that was a challenge for yes. you. Well, one of my sons came out to me as gay, and, and I don't really see that as a choice. Um, this is the way God made him. And when he came out to me as gay, I, I felt that way, but I also felt like I had done something wrong, that I made him into a gay person. You know how uh, Freud tends to blame mothers for all the <laughs> things that happen to their sons and daughters. And, um, and so I felt guilty and I felt ashamed and I felt fearful for him. And I had a lot to learn. I, 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 the one thing that I knew was that I loved my son. And I told him when he came out to me, it was okay because I did love him. And, um, and so as, as we started this journey of, of me learning how to cope with the homophobia that society had put within me, um, I began to learn. I began to learn things like, for instance, homo, uh, homosexuality isn't a choice. It's there. It's, it's part of, of your being, just like heterosexuality is. Anyway, uh, to fast forward this a little bit, uh, he had a, a partner whom uh, he uh, uh, loves very much, and the partner got sick. So they moved from Hawaii all the way back to England where uh, uh, Garrett could get health care, and eventually he did. He, uh, 
he died of AIDS. And um, it was at, at a time when people didn't talk so openly about AIDS. And Gar Garrett, his real name was Gary, but he went by Garrett. Um, Garrett just didn't tell anybody. He wouldn't tell Steve, he wouldn't tell me. And, and so we went through quite a lot with that young man, but I was very close to him. And after he died, I thought, somebody's got to tell his story. Well, I couldn't tell his story. I couldn't tell Steve's story, but I could tell mine all around the issues like coming, coming out and what parents go through and what happens when somebody gets sick and uh, with a disease that, uh, that, that makes you kind of a pariah. Um, so it's all in there. It's, it's all in there. Uh, that plus the fact that at the time I was um, uh, writing columns for uh, We the People and other uh, gay uh, media. And so I have the narrative and I have the columns in that book. So you get a personal view and a global view. You know, one of the most interesting things and the most important thing actually that I think you said is that you loved your son mm -hmm. and that it was that love that kind of inspired you to move on and try to understand rather than judge. And right. I think that is so important. And then coming across, you know, with the illness and some of those challenges, again, the love. Right. I mean, I think, I think in our culture, if we could just understand that love is accepting, accepting another human being right. for who they are. Absolutely. And like another thing that you said that I found was very interesting that I just want to restate for my uh, viewers is the fact that you recognize that this was what is. You know, it wasn't even a matter of choice. This was who your son was. Right. And as a mother, that you had to understand it and yeah. learn to accept it in your own I, way. I always say that parents of gay children, uh, for parents of gay children, that the children don't have to change. The parents have to change. And that's what I, I have done. I changed and I became a bit, much better person because I have a gay son. Well, you know, that's a lesson for all parents, whether your child is gay or not, that you that's have right. to understand that this is a human being and this human being comes to earth with their own challenges, right. their own way right. of being, and all we can do is support them. That's right. Well, I'd like to just show the book here. Okay. It's called Talking It Over, Understanding Sexual Diversity, which I think is really, it's a very, very interesting book, and it's very touching. And, and I'd like to for you to note that this is a picture of family values. <laughs> oh, okay, picture of family values. It's a beautiful this is John, picture. Uh, it's, it's my, uh, my uh, domestic partner, John, Steve, Garrett, and me, which, you know, I, might lead us into this next book. But they're just adorable. It's a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful picture. Well, you know, the next book I think is really, really, really interesting, the second book, and it's called Living with the Stranger in Me, An Exploration of Aging. And, you know, as I, as I talk to you, you know, I have this, this vision of my grandmother, my grandmother Eva Fagan, was just a beautiful, beautiful woman, but as she grew older, she was very, very wrinkled. And I was about 16 years old at the time. And oh, my mother just had a fit when I came into the room with my grandmother. And I said, grandmother, I says, what does it feel like to be getting so old? You look so old. And she looked at me and she said, you know, my child, I look in the mirror and I see an older woman, but inside I feel like a younger, like a young girl still. And I said to myself, what the heck is she talking about? Well, now at 72, and I'm sure you at 77, sure. we can understand these things. Right. So, so why don't you tell our viewers, just give us a little background. Is what inspired you to write this book? I mean, not everybody is willing, number one, to admit their age, but to even talk about some of the challenges. So what inspired you to write the book? Well, well living with the stranger in me um, is exactly what you said in your grandmother. Uh, inside, we are all maybe 16, <laughs> maybe 30, maybe whatever it is our favorite age is. But then all of a sudden you look in the mirror and who is that stranger? <laughs> <laughs>
it's, it's a shock. It's a shock to begin to age. But uh, you asked me what inspired me. Um, John died. And who John, was John? John was the, the gentleman in the picture, the family values picture, who was, who was my domestic partner for uh, 20 years. And um, we had a very good relationship. But in the end, I took care of him for a while. And in doing so, I lost a sense of who I was. I had to give up my column. I had to give up certain activities that I did. I had to concentrate on him for quite some time. And, and when, when he was gone, there I was, no longer part of a relationship. And I felt lost. I didn't know who I was. And I knew that I had to rebuild a life. That, that I knew. But I didn't know how to do this. So, um, so, so I, uh, I, I wrote the, the word church in the calendar. And then I went to church that uh, Sunday. And the funny thing about it was, before I even got seated, a woman came up to me and said, do you play bridge? And I thought, well, that's a funny thing to encounter in a church. But yes, I play bridge. I love to play bridge. She said, would you join our bridge club? And I said, yes. And that was the beginning, because I not only joined the bridge club, I joined the church. And, and uh, I had uh, quite a lot to tell about that. But what I, I, I began to, when I, when I uh, um, went to the church and I began to teach a class in theodicy with my uh, pastor, we wrote journals. And as I read my journal entries, people were impressed with the way I wrote. And uh, I was upset because I wanted them to focus in on the content, not the quality of the writing. And, and, and my pastor said to me, you have a gift, don't denigrate it. Well, so, you know, it's, it's interesting though, when you talk about not only the gift, but the fact that when you had this loss, that you were able to step outside of yourself. You were able to ask a few questions. You know, I have to redo my, I have to, you know, I have to renew myself. I have right. to find out who I am. Because oftentimes, you know, especially as we're getting older and as our partners get older, we get lost in them. Right. And oftentimes people stay in that lost right. modality. Right. Right. But it sounds like you decided to ask yourself the question and then to start going out into different activities. Right. And through that, you started writing this book. That, and the reason for the book is to show other women, particularly, that it can be done, that you can suffer great loss in life, you can recover, and you can become whole, and you can become more than you were. Well, that's very interesting, you know, when you use the word more than you were. Mm -hmm. Because now, even though the loss is tragic, in your own mind, I mean, right. losing a partner of 20 years, but it's still at the same time, it's that learning experience and it's that ability to move forward with your right. life. And then here you go and you produce a book. Well, you know, one of the things that I found very interesting as I scanned through the book and also that you sent me was the different poems that you wrote. And, and I just find them fascinating. There's one poem, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it to you. And just give us a little bit of an idea of what was behind the poem. What were your feelings? What were you trying to express? I'm just going to read a few lines. It's called Overcoming Fear. And I think with the aging process and with losing partners and all the different changes that go on through our life, I think the first thing that happens is we become very frightened. So the idea of overcoming fear is very, very important. So let me read this. Overcoming fear. Heavenly Father, I confess that I am afraid of getting old. I deny aging even as I know I am way past middle age. The tasks of youth are over. I am left to make new paths in territory I don't recognize. Now I find that very interesting. The tasks of youth are over. Well, what did you kind of mean by that aspect? Marrying, raising a family, uh, building a career, all those things that you do when you're young, that's over, I, I think. 
it, it, it may be that the new tasks I have in aging are related to that because I've built a different kind of career. I've, I've built a career now as a writer. Uh, but it's not, it's not the same. It's, 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 in, in, my, in my youth, it was for a purpose to get these kids uh, raised, get them through college. Uh, get enough money to run a household and, and, and so forth, you know, that kind of thing. Now it's more of an uh, inner journey, a journey of having something given to me by what I do. That's very, that's very interesting. So that's what you're talking about when you say, I'm left to make new paths and territories. I don't recognize. Right. Well, in not recognizing are, are the new path that you made for yourself was, of course, writing this book. So you have your pastor and you have these people who are giving you feedback. Right. And then you decide, you know, you're going to write this book, right? And you're, what were some of the, at the beginning, you know, when you're talking about you're left to make a new path and you feel the new path is towards writing this book, what were some of the challenges that you were faced with for yourself personally? Well, well, just the idea of writing a book. I had written one, and I knew that it takes a lot of time and energy, and that it um, uh, it it isn't easy to get published. There's a lot of uh, there are a lot of uh, parameters that, that that say don't write, don't write. Sit down and enjoy your life you're you're in your 70s now uh go take a trip do something else you know don't write don't write and yet i needed to write i needed to share this wonderful experience i had of rebuilding my life uh, because other people need to know about it they need to know that it can be done so so it sounds like to me that you overcame a lot of your first challenge was overcoming that self-talk. Don't write. Don't you write. can't do it. You, you should be going on it. cruises. Right. You're an older person. On and on and on. Well, who do you think you are writing at your age? <laughs> right. That kind of thing. And and all of that's gone by the board now because writing the book itself, I wrote it to present to the public and to tell my story. But guess what? It told me who I was. Well, you know, that's interesting that you say that, Kay, because, you know, I noticed even in, in, in producing shows or writing poetry, somehow the first thing is, oh, that's not important. Nobody's going to like it. But then suddenly it starts to write itself. Absolutely. And then you're the one who it's almost like everything we do is we write for ourselves. And that's what makes it so interesting to go out into the public because that's how we can relate. Mm -hmm. Would you agree or disagree with that? I, I agree totally. So the book kind of wrote itself for you? Is that what well, in, like? in a way it did. It, it, I, I would write a chapter and I have a group that meets every Wednesday morning, a women's group. We've been meeting for years so we know each other pretty well. And I'd take a chapter to the group and I'd read it. And, and they would like it but they'd say, oh, no. You're talking too much about John. Take that out. You've got to talk about your feelings. Okay. And, and or you've you got to be honest about that. You've got, to, you've got to tell them. I know you don't want to tell them about that, but you've got to tell them. And so, so every week I take this chapter, I'd read it, I'd go back and I'd rewrite it. I'd take it back and they'd read it again. They'd, they'd nitpick it a little bit and maybe I'd rewrite it again. And so my friends helped me write this book. Well, it, it's more than your friends helping you write the book. It sounds like you, you, you live, you know, you reached another level of consciousness by being able to take a critique. You know, oftentimes oh, yes. we hold on oh, when we're yes. trying to, you know, yes. the writer's journal, the writer's, excuse me, the writer's journey is very, very interesting. I mean, I find right. that for myself, that you're always stopping yourself. You know, or you don't want anybody to look at it because maybe they're going to say this or they say that. And you were willing to go out there and say, look, I really believe I have to bring this to the world, so to speak. Right. And now I want you to give me a critique and help right. me to improve it. Right. That takes a lot of courage. Would yeah. you agree? I mean, come on, sitting there. It, may, it, 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 takes, it takes trust, I think. 
it takes trust because these people love me. But and, also trust in yourself. And trust in myself. And so, so I was able to, to put it out there for them and they were able to critique me honestly. And we had, I was lucky, not all writers have that. How long, by the way, did it take you to write the book? It took about a year. It took about a year. Yeah. And where are you with the book right now? Uh, are you trying to get, are you, is it in oh, bookstores? This, oh, yeah, it's, it's on, it's on Amazon.com. Uh, it's in a lot of the uh, coffee shops here in Sonoma County. I have a local distributor. Okay. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being on Writer Speak. You know, time goes by very, very quickly. Your story is very inspiring, and I hope the viewers watching, if there's any writers out there, anybody that really has that urge, I hope that your story and your example will give them more and more confidence. So thank you so much, and wishing you only the best with this wonderful, wonderful book. Thank you so much. Pleasure I having enjoyed you it. Here. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Well, that was just inspiring to me as a writer myself, you know, just the idea of just getting the idea and just sitting down and doing it and allowing your friends to critique you. I mean, my goodness, that takes a lot of courage. But Kay demonstrated courage to us, and she also is a great example for anybody out there who wants to be a writer. Anyway, this is Elaine B. Holt saying thank you so much for watching, and I will see you the next time.